Shib UI short guide. Uh, since my release, I've now added a target target frame, which is placed here. And I've also added a pet frame, which is placed on the left of the player frame. Uh, all the weak auras are anchored to the shadowed unit frames. So if you take out the shadowed unit frames options and change the opacity on the background to 100, you can see where the unit frames are placed. So if we add the raid frames for LUI, party, and raid. This is how the center layout looks. So if you change from the shadow unit frames to the profile, which is called the balanced one, you can see that they bounce around. Change the past 100 again. Then we change the LUI profile to the balanced one. The raid frame stays the same, but the part frames jumps down to below the target and player frames. So if you have a resolution that doesn't match up with mine, you can go into the shadow unit frames and uncheck this lock frames. Then you can move around the frames that you want to, how much you want. But keep in mind that the weak auras are anchored to these frames, so they will move around the lines and the orbs as well. Lock that one. I've also added a feature to get dark health bars for the player and target frame. So if you go into the weak auras, then you expand the player unit frame here. You can see that I have done class theme here. IC and OC stands for in combat and out of combat. So if you want to deactivate the class themed ones, you control click both. Go into the load tab here. And you check this never box. Now these won't load. Then you go into the dark themed ones, which is below. You can select both and uncheck the never box. Now will you get the health bar, which is black, with the class color backdrop. So when the health drops, you get the purple for the warlock. Same goes for the target frame. Switching this one back target frame here so also the class themed ones and the dark themed ones. For the NPCs there, there's always the black theme. So for example you play a warlock and you want to track a buff on yourself. You go into the raven one. Uh, these bars are also anchored to the shadow unit frames. So if you move the health bar on the play frame, these will follow. So if you go into the bar groups here, short buffs is the ones placed on the play frame, and the target group is the target frame. So if you want to track backdraft, for example, for your warlock, you go into the buffs, scroll down to the whitelist here, then you just type in the buffs that you want to track. Backdraft, for example, okay. And then you want to track uh, Immolate debuff on the target frame. You go into the target, go into the debuff tab, scroll down, and type Immolate. Okay. So now, when I cast Immolate, it will be tracked on the target frame here. You do a conflag, I get the backdraft tracked here. So, as you can see now, I already added Immolate on the nameplate. But for example, if you did the tab emulate track there, you go into the slash plater, you go into the buff tracking here. And here you can uh, type in the debuffs that you want to track. So you can see now I've already added emulate. I prefer to filter out the debuffs that I want to track since I don't want it to get flooded with uh, debuffs that doesn't really matter for my gameplay. So there it is. So now, now I'm going to show how to add an animation to the orb. So for example, you want to track the inlet or I'll show an inlet animation. You can go into the ship UI Windwalker animations here. Copy one of these. Take this one, she burst cast, for example. Duplicate it and call it inlet 
test. Click this arrow here to get it out of the group. Then you want it to load when you're playing in the portal class. Uh, destruction spec and talent, you can uncheck this one. So now it gets loaded. You can also do a group here. Warlock. Animations. You can click this one. And then to the group. Now let's get added. So then you go to display here. You want to change this model. Since this that's one monk one. And when you go into this one, it looks like this. Then you expand this spells. And I've pre-scouted uh, emulate animation. For example, if you don't want to add a warlock, you can go through this one. It's a huge library of animations. Be sure to keep this one at zero from the beginning so you see the animations. But now I've already looked up. There's an emulate here. that one so you use these sliders to move them this C offset actually moves it further away so it gets smaller now we pull it down a bit go to the player orb here and activate the background so we can see where it's placed uh, so now for example this is placed in front of the orb but if I want it to be behind it, change this frame strat to the background. So now it clips behind. Then I'm going to change when I want it to show. So I'm going to this one. Change this from event to status. Go to cast. Then I'm going to type the spell ID for the emulet, which is at the bottom here, ID 348. Three, four, eight. So now this animation will show when I cast it. It's nice. Once again. And then maybe I want an explosion when the emulet goes off. And I go back here. I can duplicate this one. And I change name to success. And I go into the trigger here, I change the status to event, so this is based on combat log. So it's a spell, it's a cast success by the player, check that one, and then spell ID, which I've forgotten again, 348. Then it's just to change, uh, change the animation, I think the mage combustion has a nice Explosion. Change these sliders back to zero. So you can have a nice blow there. There we go. Let's try it out. Casting. Explosion. Ah, a bit small. Bigger. Slide it up a bit. There we go. So that's a simple way to add animations to the orb. You can sit for hours and do animations, but it takes a lot of time. <laughs>